In this video, we're going to be taking notes on adding and subtracting rationals in complex fractions. Before we start with fractions with x's in them, let's go back with a quick refresher from elementary school. If we want to take 1 half plus 2 thirds, in order to add these fractions, we have to have a common denominator. We want a least common denominator to make the fractions the easiest. When we're finding a least common denominator, we're really just multiplying by one in a useful form. Remember, that's the identity property for multiplication. So what one in a useful form are we going to use here? In order to add the two fractions, we need to have both denominators, a two and a three in the same denominator. So for the first fraction, we're missing a three in the denominator. So I'm gonna multiply by three on the top and the bottom because I really just multiplied by three over three, which is one. In the second fraction, I'm missing a two in the denominator. So I'm gonna multiply by two over two. It doesn't matter what I have in the top, I'm still multiplying the same things together. Now, I have multiplication. In my first fraction, I have one times three, which is three. In my second fraction, I have two times two, which is four. So altogether, I have three plus four, which is seven, and my denominator is two times three, which I would probably call six. And that's how I added fractions in elementary school. What we're gonna do to add fractions in algebra two is gonna follow the same model. The directions will say, simplify each expression. That means combine what I can. So my first step is to factor everything. This was the same step I had when I did multiplication or division as well. In this fraction, my first denominator is x plus one, which is already simplified. My second denominator is x plus four, which is also already simplified. Those are each factors. Notice the x and the four, those aren't factors. It's only all together x plus four is the factor. All right, I wrote them a little bit apart because the next thing I wanna do is to find the LCD. The LCD must have every factor of every denominator. So this first fraction is missing the x plus four from the second fraction. So I'm gonna multiply by x plus four on the top and on the bottom. The only thing I'm allowed to multiply by one is to not change something, so I had to put the same thing on the top and the bottom. My second fraction is missing an x plus one on the bottom, so I need to put an x plus one on the bottom. The only way I can do that is to also multiply by x plus one on the top. So that's step number three there, multiply each fraction on the top and the bottom by whatever factors are missing from the LCD. Now we're up to step number four, add the fractions by adding and simplifying the top and leaving the bottoms as the least common denominator. So if I'm going to put this together, the denominator is gonna be x plus one, x plus four. Just like when I added above, the denominator stays the same. In the top, I just simplify each expression. This is one times x plus four, which is just x plus four. This one is two times x plus one. Well, my two will need to be distributed, so it will be plus two x plus two. I'm gonna leave the bottom in factored form because I like factored form better. It allows me to see what I can reduce in the end. And on the top, I'm gonna to rewrite that by combining like terms. I have one x plus two x, which is three x's. And I have a four plus a two, which is six. I'm gonna scroll down a little so we can see more of our steps. The last step I have on the list is to factor the top if possible and reduce any factors that are the same on the top and the bottom. So looking at the top of this fraction, I have a three as the GCF. If I take the three out, then I still have the quantity x plus two left inside. In this case, it wouldn't have mattered if I factored it because I can't reduce the x plus two with any factor on the bottom. But a lot of times factors are written in this form if it's a multiple choice or a drag and drop SOL type of question. So technically we could have answered this or we could write it in factored form the way I did in blue there. All right, let's try number two as well. On number two, our first step is gonna to be to factor the tops and bottoms of all the fractions. So in this one, I have a little different situation because I have a quadratic on the bottom. So I have to factor x squared plus five x plus four. The way I usually factor quadratics is by using the boxes. x squared plus four goes my boxes. So I'm looking for two things that multiply to four x squared and add to five x. So they'll both need to be positive. They both need to have x's and one times four 
is going to multiply to 4x squared, and the 1x plus 4x will add to 5x. I take the GCF of the top row, so I must have had an x up here, and a 1 up here, and a 4 down here, and then I check 4 times 1 equals 4. So I factored my first denominator into x plus 1 times x plus 4. That was plus. My second fraction, I had a 5x on the top. On the bottom, to factor out 3x plus 3, 3 is the GCF, and that will give me x plus 1. Now I'm ready to try and find my common denominator. So I'm going to look and see what things are missing from my first denominator. My first denominator has an x plus 1 and an x plus 4. My second denominator has a 3. Well, that's missing, so I need to put a 3 on the top and bottom. And an x plus 1. I already had an x plus 1 in the first factor, so I don't need another one. Going to my second fraction, I'm missing the factor of x plus 4. So I need to put an x plus 4 on the top and the bottom. There, I move that factoring out of the way. Okay, now I'm ready to combine everything. My denominator stays the same. It doesn't matter what order I write the factors in the denominator, but usually I'd put a GCF like 3 out in front. The x plus 1 and the x plus 4, they can go in either order. So the top of my first fraction, I just had 1 times 3, which is 3. And in my second fraction, I had 5x times x plus 4. So I'll need to distribute there to get 5x squared plus 20x. So my last step is to just sort of clean this up. Um, let me come down here. I have a 5x squared. I'm going to usually write this in standard form. Plus 20x plus 3. I like to write the biggest exponent first, and then I work my way down. And I leave the bottom the same. Uh, let's just double check on the top here. Are there two things that I can multiply to 15x squared and add to 20x? Well, the only way to multiply to 15x squared is either 1 times 15 or 3 times 5. And even if I put x's with both of those, neither one of them is going to go to 20. So this is prime. And my answer right here is complete and factored. Pause the video while you try number 3. So in number 3, I started out and I factored x squared minus 4x minus 12. I did that over here by factoring using boxes. I got x minus 6 and x plus 2. To factor 4x plus 8, I just had a GCF to come out. Then I had to build a common denominator. My first fraction was missing a 4. My second fraction was missing the x minus 6. Then I simplified. On the first fraction, I just had 1 times 4. And on the second fraction, I had to distribute the 3x times the x minus 6. In the last step, I combined like terms and just rewrote everything in standard form. So I wound up with my answer here in the box, 3x squared minus 18x plus 4, all over 4, the factors x minus 6 and x plus 2. By the way, I did double check on the top of my fraction here. Did uh, it factor out? No, it didn't. It was prime, so I knew I was done. OK, let's turn the page and look at subtraction. I didn't write steps for subtraction, but the steps for subtraction are going to be the same as my steps for addition. The only difference is the first thing I'm probably going to do is going to be change subtraction to add the opposite. So in other words, I have a tendency to forget this little subtraction sign in the original problem. So I like to change that to a plus and then put the minus up there on the top of the fraction. Uh, it just makes me remember it as I'm going through the problem. I have a tendency to lose subtraction if I don't do that. So once I've changed subtraction to add the opposite, now my next thing is just going to be to follow the steps for addition. My first step for addition was to factor. So that's the first thing I'm going to do in problem number four. Now, in problem number four, I have a little different situation on the bottom. I have 125 minus 5y squared. I typically like my quadratic term, that's the y squared term, to be positive. So if I were factoring this and I see my GCF is 5, so I know I can take the 5 out, but I would also take out the negative as well. So that would give me a negative 25 and a plus y squared when I take out that GCF. I do that because then I have y squared minus 25 if I just change the order of these two. I can change the order because the y squared stayed positive and the 25 stayed negative. I can't change the order unless I keep the signs with them. 
then I can factor my y squared minus 25 into y plus 5 and y minus 5. You don't have to factor this way, but a lot of times we wind up with factors where the signs are reversed and it makes it nicer if we always have the letter first. In my second fraction, when I factor out the 3y plus 15, 3 is my GCF, so that gives me y plus 5 as my second factor. So I did all my factoring work, now I'm ready to go to subtraction. My first factor had a 7y on the top, and then the bottom I just factored into the minus 5 times y plus 5 times y minus 5. My second fraction, remember I changed this to add the opposite, so it had a negative 4 on the top. On the bottom, I had the 3, and I had the y plus 5. So what am I missing? In the first fraction, I'm just missing a 3, so I need a 3 on the top and the bottom that I'm going to multiply by. On the second fraction, I'm missing a negative 5, so I'm going to put a negative 5 on the top and bottom. And I'm also going to put a y minus 5, because I need one of those as well. So that needed two factors. Okay, multiply by the same thing on the top and bottom. That's the only way I can keep my fractions equal. Now, I just need to clean this up. The denominator is going to stay the same. I would like to write my negative 5 and my 3 together, so I'm going to call those negative 15 since they're multiplied, and I had a y plus 5 and a y minus 5. Then I need to put together the tops. The top of the first fraction was 7y times 3, which is 21y. On the second fraction, I had a negative 4 times a negative 5 times a y minus 5. Multiplication I just go in order from left to right. So I have negative 4 times negative 5 is positive 20. I'm then going to take that and distribute it to both the y and the minus 5. So I have now a positive 20y, and a positive 20 times a negative 5 is a negative 100. Last step is going to be to combine like terms on the top. 21y plus 20y is 41y. Then I had my minus 100 on the bottom. I had minus 15, I had y plus 5, and I had y minus 5. This answer is a fine answer. It's not the only right answer, however. I would have left it like this, but you need to realize, remember, if we have a negative in front of a fraction, just a little side note here, if we have a negative, I could have a negative a over b, I could have a over negative b, or I could have a negative out in front, a over b. All three of those things mean the same. So I just have to realize if this were a multiple choice kind of question, this, this may not be written as the answer. I could also write this as the negative being out in front of the fraction. So I could put the negative out here. And then on the bottom, I'd have 15, y plus 5, and y minus 5. And on the top, I'd have 41y minus 100. Or my other option is to have the negative put on the top of the fraction in which case it would distribute to both terms, and I'd have negative 41y, now it would be plus 100 if I distributed the negative, and on the bottom I'd have the positive 15, the y plus 5, and the y minus 5. Again, I don't care which one of these you write, any of these answers is fine with me. I would just let, leave it however you did the problem, but realize if it were a multiple choice and your answer looked like the original red one, and that wasn't an answer choice, you should find either of the other ones as well. Okay, why don't you pause the video while you try number five. Remember to start out by making this instead of a minus, let's change it to plus a negative five and go from there. All right, in number five, I started out and I factored my 2x minus six. There was just a GCF of two, so I took that out. My second fraction was already in factored form. That was an x plus two. So what was my first factor missing? My first fraction was missing the x plus 2, so I put that on the top and bottom. My second fraction was missing both the 2 and the x minus 3, so I put that on the top and on the bottom. Then it came time to simplify. On the top of the first fraction, I just had the x plus 2 times 1. And on the second fraction, I had to distribute. I have 5 times 2, well actually negative 5 times 2, which was negative 10 and then the negative 10 got distributed to both the x and the minus 3. So I had negative 10x and a plus 30. The last step was to combine like terms. So I wind up with my final answer of negative 9x plus 32 over 2 times x minus 3 and x plus 2. I couldn't factor the top, so I left that as it was. 
Pause the video while you try number six. Okay, on number six, I had my first denominator here, which I had to start out and factor. It had a GCF, and then I could factor by boxes, so my first denominator was 3 times the quantity x minus 1 times the quantity x minus 2. Then I factored my second denominator. My second denominator had a GCF of 3, then I factored what I had left, and my second fraction, the denominator, was 3 times the quantity x minus 1 times the quantity x plus 2. So I took those two fractions and I put them over here. So what was I missing? My first fraction was missing an x plus 2 on the top and bottom, and my second fraction was missing an x minus 2, so I put that on the top and bottom. Then I went through and simplified. So we need to realize that when I changed this to add the opposite, I have two options. I can either distribute the negative into the first fraction, or I can go ahead and multiply that together, which I can multiply by FOIL or by boxes, and then I have to take the negative and distribute it to everybody. So when I'm going to combine like terms in this last step, what I really have is x squared plus negative 2x squared plus 4x minus x and plus 2 if I distribute that negative to everyone. So that's how I got my answer right here. The top didn't factor out, so I just left it as it was, and there's my final answer. Pause the video if you need a little more time with that. And also, you can try number seven. So here's number seven. In number seven, I started out, I factored the first fraction, and I did that up here. I got this three times the quantity x plus seven, x plus five. I factored my second denominator, got six times the quantity x plus five, and then I had to build a common denominator. So this one's a little different because I have two numbers in front. I have a three and I have a six. So when I'm looking for my common denominator between three and six, realize that six is really just two times three. So technically what my first fraction is missing is only a two. So I put a two on the top and bottom that would give me my six. My second fraction was missing the x plus seven on the top and bottom, so I put that there. Then I went through and simplified. Remember when you're distributing to take the negative with you. And then I rewrote my terms in standard form with the x squared term first. This is a fine answer to leave it like that, but since every term in the top was negative, you realize that you could also have factored out a negative and written this answer instead. Again, it doesn't matter to me, but if it were a multiple choice or a drag and drop SOL type of question, realize that those two answers are the same. All right, let's turn over to the last page. Simplifying complex fractions. Okay, there's that page without any answer. So, what's a complex fraction? A complex fraction is when we have a fraction inside a fraction, and that's what we have here in number eight. I have this one over x in the top of the fraction, so I've got a fraction in a fraction. How am I going to do these problems? Well, again, I should factor. Usually these are given in factored form, but always factor first if they aren't. Uh, before I can do that, my next step is to find the LCD for every fraction in the problem. So my first fraction was this 1 over x. The denominator of that is just an x. My second fraction in the fraction is 5 over y. So the denominator for that has a y. So x, y is the least common denominator for all of the fractions in the problem. So what I'm going to do is step number two, multiply the big fraction. That's this one right here. Multiply the big fraction by the LCD over the LCD. I can't just multiply by xy, but I can multiply by xy over xy. Now I've multiplied by 1. So when I do that, I'm going to distribute the LCD to each term. So let me start out and rewrite the first fraction, the original problem here. Oh, that's 5 over y, sorry. So I'm taking this xy and I'm going to distribute it to everything in the fraction here. So when I distribute to everything, I have an xy here, I have an xy here, I have an xy here, and I have an xy here. Realize if I wanted to write this xy as a fraction, it would be xy over 1, but I don't really write it like that. I can if I want to. 
Now, my next step is to go through and reduce each term. If you chose the LCD, you should no longer have a fraction in a fraction. The reason I multiplied by xy is because I want all of these denominators to cancel out. So in my first fraction, my x's reduce out. In my bottom fraction, my y's reduce out. So what do I have left? On the first fraction on the top, all I have left is the 1 times y, which gives me y. It was over 1, so I don't need to write that. In the second piece, I have a 3, an x, and a y, so that's just 3xy. On the bottom, I have the 5 and the x left, so that's 5x. Again, it's over 1 now, so I don't need to write that. And my last piece was the 4xy. By the way, this was all addition, but if it's not, just be sure you're keeping track of whether you have addition or subtraction. This is done, but I should, in step number 4 here, check to see if you can factor and reduce further. So on the top, there's a GCF of y. If I factor that out, it gives me 1 plus 3x. On the bottom, I have a GCF of x, which gives me 5 plus 4y. I can't reduce anything, so this answer's fine. This answer would have been fine. Realize if it were an SOL type of question, they may have also rearranged this and called the top 3x plus 1, because they usually write the x factor first. And on the bottom, they probably would have called it 4y plus 5. Doesn't matter, those are the same thing. Any of these answers are fine. I did put this note right here, because this is something you guys try to do that doesn't work. Because the bottom was written as two terms added, you cannot do this method of flip the bottom when we're doing division and change it to multiply. We know a, a fraction is really a division problem, so we can't just flip the, the bottom here and flip the 5 over y and call it y over 5 and flip the 4 and call it 1 over 4. If we wanted to flip the bottom and multiply, I would have had to add these two fractions together with a common denominator and then do the multiplying. If I'm doing that, starting from the original problem, I have the addition of the top, I have the addition of the problem of the bottom, and then I have the division, which would really turn it into three problems, which is a lot more work. So I choose the other method instead. Okay, let's look at number nine. Number nine, I want to start out, it's already in factored form, so now I need the least common denominator for every factor, or for every fraction in the problem. Uh, this first one has an x plus one, so I need an x plus one factor. I have a y, so I need a y factor. On the bottom, I have a y, which I already have, I don't need another one, and I have an x plus one, which I already have, I don't need another one. So this is what I'm gonna multiply. I'm only allowed to multiply by one, so I'm gonna multiply by x plus one over one, x plus 1 times y over x plus 1 times y on both the top and the bottom. I'm going to rewrite this to make more space. And I'm going to show how I need to distribute. Again, I change this bottom to add the opposite while I'm at it. So I have x plus 1 times y. Alright, now I'm ready to do some reducing. So I can reduce an x plus 1 from the top and bottom, and in my first fraction, all I have left is y. In my second fraction, I can reduce the y's, and I have an x plus 1. In the third fraction, I can reduce those y's. I'll leave that uh, in factored form, or actually I'll probably distribute this out, so I'd have 2x plus 2. The reason I'm distributing on this one is because when I get to the next one, you'll see, I can reduce this x plus 1. I have a minus 1y. It's not really a factor of the bottom, because I still have two terms added together. If this said 2x plus 2 had been the only thing on the bottom, I probably would have left it in factored form. But since it's not the only thing there, I'm going to distribute it. So now I'm just going to rewrite my terms in a different order. Usually we would write this as x plus y plus 1, which can't be factored and 2x minus y plus 2, which again can't be factored. Technically it doesn't matter the order we write the terms, but that's the way they're most likely to show up on a multiple choice. Go ahead and pause the video while you try number 10. All right, in number 10, I had a y as the denominator of one fraction and an x as the denominator of the other fraction, so I multiply by xy over xy. I went ahead and distributed to everything. 
Then I went through and did my reducing. So in my first fraction, I had x, x, and y. You could write that as x squared y if you wanted to. I just left it as x, x, y for now. In the second one, my y's reduced out, and I had, don't forget this minus, I had a minus 1x or minus x. On the bottom here, my x is reduced out, and I had 1y. And on the bottom, I had an x and two y's, which again, I could write as xy squared or leave it as two y's. That looks like a good answer, but again, I should always factor to see if I can reduce anything. So on the top, I had a GCF of x, so I took that x out, which gave me a factor of xy minus 1. On the bottom, I had a GCF of y, so I took the y out, which left me with a factor of 1 minus xy. Now, I'll give you a side note for a second here. If I have the factor a minus b, I cannot rewrite that as b minus a. Those aren't the same thing. Subtraction is not commutative. But if I factor a negative 1 out of the top, I can change my a to a subtraction and my b to addition. And this is the opposite of b minus a. So if you want to change the order of two things subtracted, we factor a negative out of that. So that's what I did from the top. I factored this negative out in front, and then I could change the order of this fraction or this factor to be a 1 minus xy. That way, I had the same fraction, top and bottom, and I could reduce them out, which left me with the final answer of negative x over y. Again, we can write that as negative x over y. We could write the negative out in front, x over y, or we could write it as x over negative y. All three are the same thing. Come into class tomorrow with any questions you have on this, and we'll practice some more.